हेलो एवरी वन वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू दिस वीक फाइव एन पी टी एल लाइव के एस सेशन फॉर द कोर्स सेल कल्चर टेक्नोलॉजीज आई एम योर के ए फॉर दिस सेशन माई नेम इज अंकिता दे एंड आई होस्ट दिस सेशन एवरी वीक ऑन ट्यूजडेज सेवन टू एट पी एम सो एज ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड इन द प्रीवियस सेशन यू नो दैट Uh, this is a live interactive one hour video session where we discuss some of the previous year's assignment questions that help you in solving this year's uh, assignment questions towards the end we have a q and a segment where we uh, discuss your doubts so you can post your queries in the chat box and we try to answer them we also provide you with the necessary uh, recording for the session uh, at the end of each class so uh, let's get started so uh, before we move on to discussing the questions let's uh, recapitulate a few key points that were discussed in this week's video lectures so uh, in this week's uh, video lecture we have learned about the basics of a defined culture system so this term was uh, used, uh, used quite a number of times uh, in the beginning of the this week's lectures so the importance of defined of having a defined culture systems uh next we have uh, learned about the drug discovery process with respect to screening potential drugs against uh, any disease so here we have taken the example of alzheimer's disease uh, to study how we could uh, we could use cell culture uh, technique as a as a method to screen the efficacy of potential drugs against any diseases so for that we have taken uh, the example of alzheimer's disease uh, to understand how drug testing can be done on this model next we have uh, to test our hypothesis we have uh, taken the help of a uh, uh, of primary hippocampal neuronal cell culture uh, to study the effect of the drugs against alzheimers next with respect to the process of primary hippocampal culture we have discussed the we have discussed several terms uh, there we have seen how we can uh, dissociate the cells we can isolate the cells from our hippocamp uh, from the prenatal or our embryonic uh, rat hippo hippocampus and then uh, what what are the procedures that we need to follow for this and how we can culture these cells in our culture dish or plate and what what are the requirements that uh, need to be followed next uh, uh, we have uh, talked about uh, the hemocytometer which is a method by which we can quantify our the number of the cells growing in our culture or the or the uh, viability of our cells so we will discuss how this is done uh, that is the principle behind uh, count uh, quantifying the cells with the help of a hemocytometer in the upcoming sections next we have uh, discussed about a hypothetical test to determine the potency of uh, drugs so for this we have uh taken the as i was saying that we have taken the help of alzheimers and so we have seen how we can uh how we can test the efficacy of different drugs how we can compare which drug is a uh, better functioning than the other and uh, what do we need to observe to determine this next we have uh, uh studied about the importance of synaptic labeling next we have uh, studied about the dissociative enzymes optimization so uh for this we have um learned about several enzymes which are important for uh, primary hippocampal culture so uh, we have come across the different enzyme in name of different enzymes so uh, in this respect we have studied the uh, we have studied about papain which is a uh, enzyme which is uh, derived from papaya so we will see how papaya works and why is it preferred over other enzymes next we have also studied about the importance of neural basal medium and why it is required so uh, these are the points that we uh, will uh, we will see what what each of them are in more details in our upcoming sections so uh, talking about having a defined uh, culture medium so uh, um, as you have seen in the previous weeks we have discussed about the basics of our cell culture so talking about the basics of a cell culture we have uh, in our, in the very beginning we have discussed that uh, how, where do we get these cells from that we culture in the in our uh, that we culture in the culture plate or dish where can you obtain these cells from so cells are basically obtained from two uh, sources so the first source is uh, when you isolate cells directly from an organ or a tissue 
from a normal organ or a normal tissue so then you uh, say you take a, a, a tissue out of an or, uh, out of a of, of an organism and you uh, dissociate the cells as you know that a tissue uh, is a, a tissue refers to a group of cells uh, having a common function so you take a tissue out from an organism and you will dissociate the cells so then you will take these single cell suspension and then will seed them in a culture plate or dish so once these cells have reached confluence you will subculture or passage the cells or uh, more commonly referred to as uh, splitting the cells into different culture plate to uh, for to pro, uh, to to allow the cells to increase in number and to allow them to proliferate for several cycles or cell cell cycle division divisions so uh, this is how it is done so when you are obtaining your cells directly from from an organism or di- directly from an organ or tissue this is referred to as primary culture now primary culture after you have uh, after plated the cells in a culture dish or plate so these cells will then grow start and once they have covered the entire surface of your culture plate they need to be subcultured so post subculturing this will form your cell line however the cells which are derived from a primary uh, culture they are they will grow only up to a certain number of division cycles only so that is they have a definite life span so uh, this is what will differentiate them from a a uh, continuous cell uh, culture a uh, continuous cell culture is one where you are taking the cells from similarly you are taking the cells from an organism or from a organ or tissue but one which has a tumor so uh, these are actually transformed cells so the transformed cells will enable them to grow in culture indefinitely that is for for number of divisions for n number of divisions they will be able to grow in culture so uh, here in this study uh, in this week's lecture we have uh, we have learned about how we can uh, do primary culture how it is done so this we have discussed uh, with respect to uh, a particular model so we have tried to uh, understand how we can uh, use this primary culture of cells to uh, understand the mechanism of alzheimer's disease so uh, as we we will see in our uh, in the next uh, few slides how what alzheimer's is and how it functions and how we can use the primary culture to understand the mechanism of uh, this disease uh, that is alzheimer's disease so uh, coming to uh, the definition of uh, having uh, of the defined media so uh, as you know that uh, the, for uh, culturing our cells we uh, what we have discussed previously that for culturing we generally use a complete media so a complete media is different from a incomplete or serum free media in that it has uh, it is supplemented with 10% fps so fps as we have referred to in our previous classes that it refers to fetal bovine serum so we add fps to our media to make it so we add fps to our basal media to make it complete so this uh, fps is supply several growth factors uh, to our cells which are necessary for their uh, faster proliferation in culture however this uh, serum that is you that one which which you are using so this is obtained from a bovine source so uh, there are chances that uh, this will lead to this will confound your uh, hypothesis that you want to test in your cells because uh, the source from which you are obtaining it that is a foreign source so uh, as as uh, we have discussed that this is a major confounding factor in our cell culture uh, so it pro- uh, serum generally provides a broad spectrum of macromolecules proteins attachment and spreading fa- uh, spreading factors low molecular weight nutrients hormones and growth factors which are necessary for our cell growth so uh, the drawback of using this serum is uh, is that it contains a wide range of possible contaminants and also the addition of animal products increases batch and lot variations which lead to experimental variability and confound studies so for this we need to uh, it, it is uh, preferable that we use serum free media serum free albumin free xeno free media to maintain our cells in culture so uh, this allows uh, for uh, so this this is one term that we need to see here that it allows for better reproducibility of our results because then there is no chances of contamination from other sources so uh, for that we need to have a media which is free of serum 
albumin or any other uh, uh, any other sources of uh, animal products so uh, suppose you uh, want to test uh, the efficacy of a uh, suppose you want to determine the function of a certain protein but the serum itself will contain certain proteins so this might confound your study so as we have uh, as we are seeing here that uh, such contamination could be harmful uh, for the production of a protein based drug as well as problematic for the researchers trying to study the mechanism of a certain protein so we uh, so it is uh, recommended that we use serum free media so uh, so as we know that fbs is uh, essential for the growth of our cells so uh, now we are talking about serum free media so now a question might commonly arise that uh, then how our cells will get the nutrition that it requires for the growth so we will discuss about that now uh, talking about serum free media so uh, the serum free the growth media could be classified into several types so first thing that we talked about is the serum based media or the complete media next is our serum free media and the next uh, third one is the chemically defined or xeno free media so uh, true serum based media are the have the most complex composition uh, with the major reason for omitting serum from culture media being the fact that it is a supplement of unknown composition which could be contaminated with unwanted factors next is our serum free media which may contain undefined animal derived products such as serum albumin and undefined animal derived products contain lipid contents of albumin which is considered to be a contaminant so uh, for, as for our serum free media so uh, how is a serum free media different from a serum based media so serum free media uh so serum based media contains as i will i as i've said that it contains the fetal bovine serum but the serum free media might not contain the fbs however it contains several contaminants it might contain several animal derived products such as albumin so uh, this might also confound our study so uh, as opposed to that we have our xeno free media or the chemically defined media so the chemically defined media requires that all of the contents which are all of the ingredients that are present in it uh, be uh, properly identified as well as their concentration in which they are added so a chemically defined medium is completely free from serum or any animal derived by products or human as well as albumin free so uh, now we have seen what a chemically defined media is uh, and how it is different from a serum free or uh, how it is different from a serum free media next uh, we have seen uh, we have discussed about uh, the alzheimer's disease so uh, uh, so about uh, so in this week's lecture we have seen that uh, uh, one of the uh, so it was discussed in this week's lectures that one of the major stakeholders of the of the um, cell culture industry it is the pharma industry that is uh, so before you want to uh, before introducing a certain drug in the market you want to test its efficacy so uh, say uh, you want uh, you want to introduce a particular drug in the market so you cannot first uh, initially you just cannot uh, test it on uh, on humans so first and even before testing it on any model organism higher model organisms you need to test in the in the cell line or the cell culture uh, so you need to have a proper model that will mimic your uh disease condition they can test the efficacy of the drug and then when you when you get desirable results you can move on to the you can move on to testing the drug in your higher organisms so uh, this is how, uh, how uh, the drug testing procedure is done by the uh, pharma industries so uh, here we have taken the um, example of alzheimer's disease uh, so alzheimer's disease is a brain disorder which uh, slowly destroys the memory and thinking ability Uh, and eventually the ability to carry out simplest tasks so it could be of two types the late onset type and the early onset type so the late onset type is the more common type of alzheimers and is generally seen in uh, people who are above the age of 60 and uh, the early onset type is uh, is uh, rare and it occurs to people between the age of 30 to 60 so it is generally seen among the older adults so the disease alzheimers was named after dr alois alzheimers who noticed changes in the brain tissue of a woman 
who had died of an unusual mental illness. So the woman uh, had symptoms of memory loss, language problems, and unpredictable behavior. So uh, Dr. Alzheimer's, what he did, he examined her brain uh, post her death and found many abnormal plums, uh, now referred to as amyloid plaques, and tangled neurofibrillary uh, fibers in, in inside her brain. Uh, so uh, the presence of amyloid plaque and neurofibrillary or tau tangles are still considered one of the uh, most characteristic features of the Alzheimer's disease. Another feature uh, that is associated with Alzheimer's is the loss of connection between the nerve cells in the brain. Uh, as we know that neurons are neurons are essential in transmitting messages between different parts of the brain uh, and from the brain to the muscles and organs in the body. So uh, Alzheimer's is also associated with uh, several other uh, complex changes. However, uh, the two uh, important characteristics as we have discussed are the appearance of amyloid plaques and the tangled bundle of fibers which are referred to as tau tangles. So uh, this damage initially takes place in the part of the brain which are involved in memory um, including the entorhinal cortex and the hippocampus. So this is our hippocampal area. So uh, the major damage takes place in the hippocampus and it later affects the areas in the cerebral cortex such as those responsible for language, reasoning and social behavior. Eventually, many other areas of the brain are also damaged. So, uh, this video will uh, beautifully illustrate how the Alzheimer's disease develops. So here we are seeing how the neurons in our brains connect with each other with the help of the release of neurotransmitter which are chemical molecules which are released by one neuron and uh, sensed by the neighboring neuron.
um so in this video we saw uh, the importance uh, rather the uh, we have we saw what alzheimers can do to our brain so uh, there might be different factors which uh, which are associated with alzheimers and uh, how about the most important ones are the accumulation of beta amyloid plaques and uh, the next uh, protein is that uh, this is the uh, accumulation of the uh, neurofibrillary tau tangles within the cell body of a neuron apart from that we have also seen uh, the uh, how the vascular system might fail to deliver blood uh, to the uh, to the hippocampal area so there are several factors associated with it also another factor that we saw is the uh, is the is the ma uh, malfunctioning of glucose uh, metabolism with inside the brain so there are several factors which could be associated with uh, alzheimer's disease uh and with, which could eventually uh, cause the hippocampus uh, to shrink and loss of memory and function so uh, to uh, to uh, understand how this uh, function to how understand how uh, this uh, alzheimer's disease develops and to achieve a deeper understanding of uh, the disease we need to uh, establish a uh, an appropriate model that we can test the efficacy of uh, certain drugs which are uh, which which could possibly cure the disease and uh, for this we uh, the next thing that we will talk about is uh, the preparation of the neuron culture so as we have seen that the alzheimer's uh, disease it uh, affects the brain so within the brain uh, we have our hippocampus so uh, the hippocampus is uh, the seat uh, is considered the seat of language memory and learning so it is the main area which is affected in alzheimer's disease and so we will see how we can uh, we can uh, mimic this condition in our uh, cell culture or in in an in vivo condition to understand uh, which drugs could possibly be used to treat alzheimer's and for that we have we will be discussing the uh, the neuronal culture and how it is done so uh, neuronal culture is uh, is refers to the primary culture of uh, rat hippocampal neurons which are obtained from the prenatal or embryonic uh, embryonic rats and uh, for this uh, we will watch this video to understand how this process is done so uh, for this videos i will provide you with the link when i upload it on to youtube and i will give you the link to these videos so these video, uh, videos very uh, nicely shows how the uh, preparation of neuronal culture is done and also provide you with the entire protocol in the upcoming slides so let's see this video uh yes uh, this uh, video does not have audio because uh, that is why i switched on the caption so the protocol is uh, shown in our next slide so there you will be able to find it so the video shows that we have dissected out the hippocampus from the rat so while uh, dissecting out the hippocampus we should uh, follow proper sterile technique
Now, with the help of a scalpel and a needle, we will separate out the two hemispheres of the brain. So, uh, one point that you must uh, take proper care of while doing this is that uh, during the whole process, you must maintain proper sterility. There is must, uh, you, this must be done in pro uh, following uh, proper aseptic techniques. Uh, now, after we have separated the two hemispheres, the next thing we must do is we must uh, remove the meninges. So, the meninges refers to the uh, uh, pink covering which you can see. So, this must be removed. So, on the inner edge of the hemisphere, we can find this uh, C-shaped uh, hippocampus and we must separate it out. Now, once we have uh, dissected out the hippocampus, we will uh, place it in a, an enzymatic solution to dissociate the cells. Next, we will uh, take it and uh, we will dilute it with um, our media. Then we will mix it thoroughly to uh, uh, make it into a suspension. The next important thing that we must do is uh, we must make, uh, quantify the number of cells that we have. So, in order to measure the viability, we will take a very small volume of our cell suspension that we have obtained and then we will mix it with tripen blue dye and then we, we will observe it under a microscope with the help of a hemocytometer. So, this is a very essential step that we must follow. So, we have our culture plates which have been pre cloated with a coating material where we add our cell suspension. Now, after the cells are attached to the bottom of the petri dish, we will place it in an incubator and then after some time, we will flood it with media. So, the freshly prepared neurons will look somewhat like this, of rounded shape on the day one and eventually they will start forming extensive connections with each other in this way. So, this is how uh, it, the culture will look like after two weeks.
next uh, this is i have provided you with the protocol here so the first thing that we must do is uh, uh, prior to harvest is we should generate prenatal pups for uh, the neuronal harvest and schedule breeding between the adult mice 19 days prior to the day of neuron separation neuron isolation so for this we have taken mice uh, aged between 2 to 8 months for the purpose of a mating uh, and uh, successful mating can be determined by the detection of a uh, vaginal plug in the female palpitation or visual confirmation of pregnancy on the day prior to the neuron isolation from the pups we must uh, coat our uh, cover slips or the culture plate with appropriate coating material that is uh, for our glass uh, for our 24 well plate uh, must coat it with 3 is to 1 collagen 1 rat tail and polyd lysine solution and so on next we should allow the plates uh, to rest in an uncovered uh, uncovered in a tissue culture hood under uv light or overnight and then we must wash the plates to rinse off the uh, excess uh, coating material the coated plates can be filled with hbss which is a any buffer solution and stored and could be stored up to one week at 4 degree centigrade in the dark so next thing is the tissue harvesting so we have shown you the process how uh, the hippocampus can be dissected out uh, so for this uh, as i said will uh, already that uh, we must follow proper sterile technique uh, for this we must uh, euthanize a pregnant mouse following proper a uh, technique that is uh, you could either use cervical dislocation uh, uh, for this purpose for anesthesia is not used as i uh, Uh, studied about this is that because it uh, stops the uh, function of the brain so we euthanize a pregnant mouse at uh, approximately 90 days post fertilization by decapitation that is by removing its head now using sterile scissors we create an opening in the mid ventral side of the mouse to reveal the body cavity and with the help of autoclave sterile forceps we open the uterus and remove the pups next we decapitate the pups with fresh sterile scissors and place the removed head uh, on sterile gauze under a dissecting microscope next we open its cranium remove the entire brain remove the cerebellum separate it into two hemispheres remove the meninges uh, before isolating the hippocampus next is our tissue dissection uh, so with the help of a sterile scalpel we mince the brain tissue and uh, put it in a 3 ml of uh, sterile hbss in a uh, 100 ml tissue culture disc now next we transfer the tissue to a 15 ml conical tube as i have shown in the video next we uh, incubate this tissue at 37 degrees cent centigrade for 15 minutes uh, by inverting the tube uh, uh, for uh, at every 5 minutes so we remove the excess solution using a sterile pipette leaving the tissue undisturbed at the bottom of the tube So this is how we dissect the tissue. Next is our neuron trituration. We use a normal Pasteur pipette to uh, triturate, that is, uh, grind the tissue. And the larger tissue pieces are normal at this point and should be allowed to settle to the bottom of the tube prior to moving to the next step. Then we transfer the supernatant to a fresh sterile 50 ml conical tube. To the remaining tissue, we add 2 ml of sterile hbss and triturate a, a total of five times using the Pasteur pipette. we allow all the remaining larger tissues uh, pieces to settle to the bottom of the tube and combine the supernatant with the previous supernatant for a total of 4 ml of dissociated neuronal cells so uh, uh, next step is the cell plating so here comes in our uh, the use of our hemocytometer so as i have discussed that uh, it is very important point to count the number of cells that we are seeding because suppose if you want to test the effect of any particular drug and so you have two groups uh, so one is our control group where you don't add the drug and then next is our experimental group so where we will be adding our drug so if you want to uh, understand the efficacy of the drug it is very important that you start with the same number of cells for both the cases so uh, that will uh, help ensure that the results that you are getting is are reproducible so that is why we need to properly quantify the cells and check their viability because cells which uh, whose viability is low might not be growing uh, properly in culture so to ensure that the cells that we have uh, are of, uh, also of the uh, of highest viability we need to count the number of cells
So the cells can be uh, counted with the help of a hemocytometer. Next, uh, we mix the appro appropriate number of cells with the indicated volume of the neurobasal media, which is the media used for the culturing of the hippocampal neurons. Next, we place the neurons in a 37 degree uh, centigrade incubator at 5% CO2 level overnight. Uh, next, we remove half the volume of the media from the cells and replace it with the same volume of the neurobasal media. So, uh, we keep so every alternate or every two to three days, we uh, remove half the volume of the neurobasal media and we replace it with the exact volume of the of the media. So, so slowly we can we can see that uh, our cells are uh, forming connections and uh, it will take about three weeks for our cells to uh, form a mature uh, to uh, to mature and form a proper network among themselves. So uh, this is how. Uh, the neurons will look like on day 1 versus day 10. Now we will discuss about the importance of the media that we are choosing. So uh, uh, with respect to, a me to our media, we have discussed about two medium. That is the neurobasal medium and the neurobasal A medium. Now what are the differences between the two? So neurobasal medium is a basal medium which is designed for the maintenance and survival of pure prenatal and embryonic neuronal cell population uh, along with JIPCO B27 sub supplement. So JIPCO is the name of the manufacturer of this company. Next we have the neurobasal A medium. So how does the neurobasal A medium differ from the neurobasal medium? So neurobasal A medium is designed for the maintenance and survival of the pure postnatal and adult brain neuron. Uh, it is different from the neurobasal medium in having uh, in having this 4 gram per liter of sodium chloride which helps to increases, increase its osmolarity uh, which is required for the growth of the adult and postnatal brain neurons. So next we will now uh, finally come to discussing the questions. Now uh, what is the uh, characteristic shape of the hippocampal neurons? So our question number one uh, now we will discuss is uh, what is the characteristic shape of the hippocampal neurons? Uh, round, pyramidal, elongated or hexagonal? So we have four options here. So now you can write the answers in the chat box and we will see. Okay, so a couple of you are saying that it should be pyramidal. Now, uh, we will move on to the answer. So, yes, uh, the right answer is pyramidal. So, this is the this is how your the mature neurons would look like in your culture. So, the pyramidal layer is the thickest and the most important layer of the hippocampus composed of densely packed pyramidal neurons. So, uh, the axons of the pyramidal cells take information received by the hippocampus and send it to the other structures in the brain. They have a soma, which is the cell body, shaped like a teardrop or rounded pyramid, pyramid uh, from where it gets its name. Uh, a conical spray of longer dendrites that emerge from the pointy end of the soma and a cluster of shorter dendrites that emerge from the rounded end or the basal dendrites. So, uh, this is how your pyramidal neurons look like. So, we obtain the pyramidal neurons from our hippocampus. Uh, from the pyramidal layer which is the thickest and the most important layer in the hippocampus. So out of several layers, uh, the pyramidal layer is the most important one and from there we get our pyramidal neurons. So they look like uh, somewhat like this in their mature form and the job of the pyramidal neurons is that uh, they transform synaptic input into patent action potential. Uh, so basically they are required for the purpose of um, in receiving information and sending it to the other uh, parts of the brain. Next, we will move on to question number two. So, pepin is a uh, um, followed by a blank derived from. So, we have another blank there. So, uh, we have four options here: proteolytic enzyme papaya, proteolytic enzyme milk, lactose dehydrogenase uh, papaya, lactose dehydrogenase milk. So, you can write the correct option in the chat box and we will see. So, all of you are saying there should be option A that uh, papain is a proteolytic enzyme derived from papaya. So, let us see what the correct answer should be. 
so the right answer is papaya uh, and it is uh, the right answer is uh, papaya papain is the proteolytic enzyme which is derived from papaya so by proteolytic we uh, mean that it is a, a protein digesting enzyme and uh, it is very evident from its name papain that it is derived from uh, papaya now what is the use of uh, pap uh, of this enzyme papain in primary uh, hippocampal neuronal cell culture so uh, uh, this is another manufacturer stem cell technologies which uh, which manufactured this uh, enzyme papain now uh, this is a, a tissue specific dissociation reagent used for the isolation of primary cortical and hippocampal neurons from mouse or rat embryonic brain tissue so as we were discussed that uh, we must uh, to, in order to be able to dissect out the neurons from our hippocampus we uh, need to mechanically dissociate the cells also uh, we need to use an enzyme the but the enzyme that we used must be one which is not harsh and damaging like the other enzymes that we use like the trypsin that we use normally use in our cell culture so papain is one such ex enzyme it is a uh, less damaging and more effective than other proteases so its nature it is a cysteine protease consisting of a single polypeptide containing three disulfide bridges native crystal and papain is unreactive until acted upon by mild reducing agents for example cysteine sulfide or sulfite and therefore likely exists as a zymogen so basically this is what we need to uh, remember about the enzyme papain is that it is a uh, tissue dissociation reagent uh, used primarily for the isolation of primary cortical and hippocampal neurons from mouse or rat embryonic brain tissue and why we use it it, it is because it is less damaging and uh, more effective than other proteases next coming to question number 3 uh, so uh, the question number 3 is in hemocytometer the volume of 1 uh, 1 mm by 1 mm square is we have uh, again four options here uh, 0.25 nanoliter 5 nanoliter 60 nanoliter or 100 nanoliter so you can write the answer in the chat box and then we will see how this is calculated um so i am getting mixed answers in the chat box so uh, we will move on to seeing how the calculation process is done so uh, this is how a typical hemocytometer looks like so uh, with the help of a hemocytometer we what we need to do is we need to manually count the number of cells so uh, the hemocytometer this portion of the hemocytometer looks somewhat like this we have a, a larger square and it is divided into four corner squares like this each four corner squares is again divided into 16 smaller squares and the and the length of each um, of each grid in this uh, uh, corner squares is that it is 1 mm so uh, we have four corner squares here now the uh, surface uh, surface area of this this corner square is 1 mm square and the uh, and the, uh, this Uh, in this figure you can see how this is uh, how this looks like like if you look at it from the side this is how it will look like so we have our we have the uh, four corner squares here and this itself has a depth so it's a it, it has a length a breadth and a depth so the depth of this is 0.1 mm so this is where we uh, and on top of it we have a cover slip so we need to add our cell suspension uh, at this portion so that it occupies this much volume inside the and uh, underneath the cover slip now uh, when you observe it under a phase contrast microscope so uh, suppose you take a cell suspension uh, say for uh, adherent or uh, suppose you have cells which are growing in adherent or suspension culture so as we have discussed earlier that for adherent cell culture you need to uh, dissociate the cells with the help of enzyme trypsin then uh, in order to uh, neutralize the action of the enzyme trypsin you need to add fresh media to it and then you have to centrifuge the cells for suspension cells you need not go through this procedure of trypsinization um, uh, for them you need to collect the cells in a falcon 
and then subject it to centrifugation directly. Now, after you have obtained the pellet that uh, uh, following centrifugation, we need to uh, discard the uh, discard the old media uh, required to uh, required to neutralize the trypsin, and then we must add fresh media to it. So now we have a cell pellet, and we we uh, we take the cell pellet and we we uh, resuspend it in a known volume of a uh, fresh media suppose we have the cell pellet and we uh, resuspended it in a uh, known volumes say 1 ml of cell uh, fresh media now from this 1 ml of uh, fresh uh, freshly uh, 1 ml of uh, media containing your cells we uh, pipette it a uh, number of times to obtain a single cell suspension of cells and from this single cell suspension of cells we uh, take a very small volume of cells say 10 microliter so we take 10 microliter of cell suspension and then we mix it with a equal volume that is we prepare a 1 is to 1 uh, mixture of tripen glue and our cell suspension and then we with the help of a pipette we will uh, we will we will with the help of a pipette we will uh, put this cell suspension mixed with uh, the tripen blue dye on both sides of the cover slip that is in this side and in this side as well so now uh, if you observed uh, if you take one side and you observe it under the face contrast microscope you can see uh, grids like this now uh, as i said that each grid is of surface area 1 mm square and it has a depth of 0 0.1 mm so uh, what is the volume of this uh, what is the volume of this one large corner squared then um, so if you want you can write in the chat box and we will uh, and i will see if uh, the concept is clear to you yet so what do you think the volume of this one corner square should be if its surface area is uh, 1 mm square and it has a depth of 0 0.1 mm okay so uh, moving on uh, we will see what it is so uh, this uh, as you can see in this uh, figure given here uh, the blue square the smallest square over here so uh, this this square the uh, center square is divided into uh, five uh, 25 smaller squares now inside that 25 smaller squares we again have grid lines separating them so we have uh, one two three uh, grid lines which are separating them so inside them we ha again have 16 smaller squares so what is the uh, surface area of this small square so the surface area is uh, 0 0.0025 millimeter square for this smaller square next for this uh, this square we are, as this is marked in yellow you can see that this size is 0 0.04 millimeter square for this uh, greener square uh, green shaded square the surface area is 0 0.0625 millimeter square and for the red the larger square it is 1 millimeter square so uh, now we will move on to the calculation so since uh, this is a known formula so we know that 1000 millimeter cube is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 liter so from this we have calculated that what should be the uh, the what should be uh, that is a uh, 0 0.1 millimeter cube equivalent to uh, 0 0.1 millimeter cube is therefore equivalent to so we have calculated this is a simple calculation that we have done here so uh, then we found that 0 0.1 millimeter cube is equal to 10 to the power minus 7 liter now this we have converted to uh, our nanoliter so we get this answer which is our 100 nanometer nanometer now if we go back so the right answer for this is 100 nanoliter so uh, moving on, uh, so with the help of a hemocytometer, we can uh, find out with our viable cell count. That is the, uh, uh, this uh, with the help of this formula given here, we can find out the number of cells. Uh, for this, we need to, uh, for each of the corner squares, we need to calculate the number of cells uh, that we are obtaining. And then after we have counted the number of cells in each of these four corner squares, we need to uh, take their average. So we need to divide it by the, total number of large corner squares counted that is uh, for this in here we will say that it is 4 then we need to multiply it with our dilution factor so in this case our dilution factor is 2 so I will tell you where this 2 is coming from since we have prepared 
वन इज टू वन ट्राइप एंड ब्लू इज टू सेल्फ एसपेन मिक्सचर सो दे फॉर अवर डायल्यूशन फैक्टर हियर शुड बी टू नेक्स्ट वी मल्टीप्लाई इट विद with uh, this correction factor 10 to the power 4 or 10000 cells so uh, this is how we will get an estimate of our viable cell count uh, similarly for our, for our non viable cell count we will uh, count the number of dead cells uh, the number of dead cells is shown by the cells which are taking up the trypan blue dye so i have discussed this in my previous video that trypan blue dye uh, is only able to stain those cells which are dead cells uh, while the live cells will will not be taking up the color so this is how if we differentiate the non viable cells from the viable cells and then we uh, we can determine the percentage vi viability of the cells of the of our of our cells with the help of this formula which is the number of viable cells divided by the total number of cells into 100 next uh, moving on this video will show you how uh, we count the cells with the help of a chemocytometer so we take our uh, cells or the culture flask in which the cells are growing from out of the incubator then we aspirate the media and then we uh, clean our cells with the help of a uh, with the help of a uh, pbs or serum free media next we aspirate the uh, the uh, pbs as well after we have uh, properly ensure that we have cleaned the surface of the cells with our pbs next we add an appropriate volume of trypsin to desiccate our cells so this is this they have shown with respect to our to the adherent cell culture that is why they need to uh, dissuade the cell from the surface of the culture flask with the help of the enzyme trypsin so we ensure that the trypsin is uh, covering the entire surface of the flask and then next we will place it in our incubator so here they are aspirating off the excess amount of trypsin now we will place our flask in the incubator for about 2 minutes till the cells start to dissociate so we observe our flask under a microscope to ensure that the that our cells are dissociating so it will look somewhat like this now if you feel that your cells have not properly dissociated you can tap the uh, flask in this way Uh, and th that will make sure that all the cells are dissociated next we add an appropriate volume of fresh media to it to neutralize the action of the enzyme trypsin so if we are using suspension cells these steps could be skipped and we could directly collect our cell suspension and subject it to centrifugation and obtain the pellet so here they have uh, taken the cell suspension even before centrifugation uh, so they have uh, properly mix the cells and made it into a single cell suspension and taken a small volume out of it and taken it in a in append of tube so we have our cell suspension here and 
then we take our uh, dye which is the tripen blue dye and we mix it with our cell suspension here also they have prepared a 1 is to 1 dilution by mixing 20 microliter of our cell suspension with a 20 microliter of the tripen blue dye and so here the dilution factor is also 2 Now they mix the cell suspension with the dry uh, with the dye thoroughly, and then take a, again a very small volume, suppose ten microliter, and uh, they add it to the hemocytometer in this way. So there is a groove where we need to uh, where we need to uh, we need to add our cell suspension on both sides of the hemocytometer. So there is an A side and a B side. Now we will observe it under a phase contrast microscope. So again this is the formula with which we need to uh, calculate uh, the total number of cells and the number of viable cells and our percentage of viability. Moving on to our question number 4. So which of these antibodies is used to label mostly neuronal cells? We have four options here MHC, MAP2, ISLT and anti-RYR. So you could write the answer and we will discuss. Okay, so a uh, couple of you are saying that it should be MAP2, that is option B. So we will see what the right answer is. So the right answer is MAP2. MAP2 refers to microtubule associated protein 2, which is a neuron specific protein and that promotes assembly and stability of the microtubule network. So given here is, a, is, the, is the image of a mouse cortex tissue stained with anti MAP2, which is shown in green. Uh, next, so uh, here I have provided you with a link. Uh, so in this, uh, if you follow this link, you can find the list of the neural cell marker antibody targets which allow for the identification of neuronal cells involved in various stages of neural development and neurological disorder. Next, coming to question number 5, which of these is not a development stage in rats? So again, we have four options here, embryonic, prenatal, Rental or neonatal? You can write the answer. This is a very straightforward question. So we'll uh, move on to the answer. So uh, it's very evident that uh, option 3 is not the right answer. So uh, rental is not a development stage in rats. Now we'll move on to question number six. Uh, which of these protein misfolding and aggregation is linked to Alzheimer's disease? Uh, we have again four options here, amyloid, beta, tau, both A and B or none of A and B. So um, I think I've discussed this already in the previous slides. So two important characteristic features of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, it, it, it is associated with the accumulation of uh, amyloid plaques and the neurofibrillary tau tangles inside the cell body. So uh, option A and option B both are the correct option. So our option C is the right option both A and B. So uh, this is uh, our right option. We'll, uh, so this is how a, a normal brain hippocampus will look like and inside the hippocampus these are how the healthy neurons look like whereas in case of Alzheimer's affected brain uh, the hippocampus sh shrinks considerably and the neurons look somewhat li like this that is there is a uh, accumulation of the uh, tau neurofibrillary tangles within the cell body of the neuron and the formation of amyloid plaques. Moving on to question number 7 uh, which of these brain regions is associated with memory and learning? Uh, 
again we have four options here hypothalamus amygdala visual cortex or the hippocampus so again this is one question that we have discussed prior to this while discussing about the alzheimer's disease in which a uh, portion of our brain is the most affected in alzheimer's and which of the functions are the most affected so uh, you can write the answer so many of you are saying there should be option b that is the hippocampus so we have already seen that the hippocampus is the uh, is the seat of language memory learning in the brain and uh, the and alzheimer's is a disease that affects the uh, mainly the hippocampus area and which leads to loss of memory and function of the hippocampal area so hippocampus is the right option moving on to question number 8 neuro basal medium is buffered by we have four options here basic amino acids oxygen sodium bicarbonate or glucose so again you can write the uh, correct option and we will see what the right option is so a couple of you are saying there should be option c so we will see what it is so the right option is sodium bicarbonate so uh, the neuro basal medium uh, um, just like any other basal medium uh, except for the ones which are independent of carbon dioxide such as uh, the l50 medium which does not require the carbon dioxide uh, buffering uh, so neuro basal medium also has the requirement of sodium bicarbonate which acts as a buffer and helps to maintain the proper co2 concentration inside the cell for which we need to add sodium bicarbonate to this medium so uh, this is the right option here so the neuro basal medium is buffered with the help of sodium bicarbonate next we will move on to question number 9 so question number 9 uh, is a uh, question number 9 reads as the zeno free medium we have uh, five statements here and uh, each of these five statements are a does not contain ingredients derived from non human animals does not contain recombinant materials made from non human animal dna sequences option c may contain purified processed or unprocessed materials from human sources option d may contain recombinant materials made from human plant bacterial or yeast dna sequences and option e animal derived components may have been used as raw materials at the secondary tertiary level of manufacturing unless otherwise indicated again we have uh, our four options here that is a is false b is only true a b c are true a to e all are true so we have five statements here and we need to uh, we need to understand which of them are the right options and which of them are the uh, which of them are the correct statements and which of them are the wrong statements so we have discussed already before that uh, zeno free medium refers to the medium which is a uh, which, which could also be known as the chemically defined medium however all the components in it are Uh, known and uh, properly quantified. That is, uh, it has uh, we we already know what are the ingredients present in it, and we also know in what concentration they are present in our media. Uh, so, xenofree medium differs from a serum-free medium in that it contains no uh, serum as well as other animal byproducts that might be uh, present in a in a, in the serum-free medium. So, xenofree medium differs from the serum-free medium in that it does not contain serum or any other animal derived products so uh, keeping in mind uh, these statements uh, uh, you can write the answer in the chat box and we will see which is the correct option so uh, again a couple of you are saying that should be option b a to e all are true so we will see so yes it is option option d that is a to e all are true next moving on the last question question number 10 so uh, the libovitz l15 medium contains uh, what but lacks what so we yeah, again have four options here sodium bicarbonate sodium carbonate sodium tartrate sodium bicarbonate sodium glutamate sodium bicarbonate sodium pyruvate sodium bicarbonate the l15 medium um, is a um, what kind of it contains what and lacks what so this is a quite a repeated question and have been discussed uh, in the previous lectures as well 
so i think you all already know the answer to this so the l15 medium as i have discussed that it does not require uh, the buffering action of sodium bicarbonate so uh, it is evident here that it, so l15 medium does not contain sodium bicarbonate however what does it contain what does uh, what does it contain which enables its uh, proper buffering so uh, the l15 medium uh, is contains sodium pyruvate but lacks uh, um, okay i think there is a problem uh, in the answer so uh, it should uh, although answer a has been shown here as the right answer but option b should be the correct one so all of you who have answered that it should be option b is the right answer there might have been some mistake in the in the answer here so it contains sodium pyruvate and lacks sodium bicarbonate that is option b is your correct option here so the l15 medium is buffered with the help of phosphates and free basic amino acids instead of sodium bicarbonate this medium is designed for supporting cell growth in environments without carbon dioxide equilibration uh, this l15 medium is modified as uh, it, so it contains galactose phenol red which is a indicator l glutamine and sodium pyruvate whereas it lacks glucose hepase and sodium bicarbonate so here we come to the end of our session so i would like to thank all of you for joining the session and i look forward to your joining uh, the next in the coming weeks as well so thank you so uh, if you have any questions you can quickly post them in the chat box and then we'll end the session so if we have uh, if we don't have any more questions we will end the session here thank you all for joining good night